We made the submission to NCTE a couple of years ago, and a part of that we have we did some research on what the research companies were saying. So Forrester and Gartner and IDC and CIO Insight and all these guys and Forpus have done some studies here in Ireland. And everybody's report all the time is that open source is growing in significance and its contribution to the business. And each year, each new report is kind of increasing the rate at, at which this movement is growing. I suppose one of the other things, and I, I haven't put a slide in here, is around government adoption and government policy. And again, it's a significant move forward. Some strong statements made in the UK, not necessarily implemented yet, but made in 2002, remade in 2005, made stronger again recently about um, support for open source or, or push towards adoption. Um, countries like Denmark made a significant move recently towards assisting in all public sector documents comply with the open document format rather than some of the proprietary formats. The Norwegians have said the same. The Germans have threatened to say it. Some of the states in the US have threatened to say it. So national governments are moving this direction. The, the uh, research companies in the business space all upping their projections of what's going on here. Um, so maybe maybe just to talk a little bit further about benefits, you know, why, why you might consider going this way. Um, and I would say these are kind of the traditional arguments. Minimizing vendor lock-in and proprietary systems. It does in a way, um, but it kind of limits limited by your expertise or your access to expertise. And I think that's maybe a case with any software. If you learn how to do things in Photoshop, then you're kind of locked into Photoshop because that's how you know how to do things. It's an investment on your part. Um, but traditionally, people say avoid vendor lock-in, and when you get to open standards and interoperability, it does become quite significant. And capital expenditure, minimize capital expenditure, I've talked to already. Um, and one of the things worth noting here is the the annual cost, like like your cow and so that that type of. So you've got upfront costs, saves you that, and you know maybe it saves you money, maybe it doesn't, depends on how well the application fits your needs. But the ongoing having to repay every year can be quite significant. So we've done an application for the HSE, a uh, geographic and statistic application that they've rolled out throughout the country. And means no, no user license means there's no economic barriers to roll out. And there's no economic barriers to collaboration. And that's actually quite a significant, quite a significant point. I think I may be making it again further down. You know, if, if a number of schools got together to develop some kind of, um, administration system or course management, student management type system. And there are no economic barriers to adding another school or who's going to pay for it or not, all this type of stuff. More control over IT strategy. And probably quite something one of the most significant points is open source tools tend to be very strong on open standards. And open standards and interoperability. We're going through again, we're going through an issue with um, or the survey at the moment, or the survey are releasing, um, they're going to release web services or not. So we're sort of working through the different web service standards to try and use something that's open. And um, open projects allow an organization to influence the roadmap. Yeah, if you're, if you're good, you know, and, and lots of organizations are quite strong and have very interested, um, very interested, say, teachers who take on the IT role, they can influence projects and, and often do reduce the risk of obsolescence and promoting innovation and um, I guess related to collaboration and inclusiveness that a lot of these points really try to touch on. And um, if I said more specifically, instead of Microsoft Office for ECDL, ICDL, you could use OpenOffice. Instead of WebCT, you use Moodle, um, which I think a lot of schools and colleges are using, you could use Sakai is in use in UCD and a number of large colleges. Uh, you could use Dokios, which again seems to be more preferred in large colleges, maybe more in the course management space. Um, Photoshop and Illustrator, very popular. Could use GIMP, GIMP and Ins Inkscape, a blender for 3D stuff. ArcGIS, very popular in the geography space, especially in the universities. And QGIS and App Server and all plethora of geographic applications 
available through OSGO. Um, and on the health sector, all the statisticians tend to use SPSS. We could use the R project, very powerful project. Auto card for cards, the versions of Q card, which especially from a, a second level education perspective, I think probably sit, would fit quite well. Just moving along. So it's all a sort of availability of software enabling especially e-learning culture. Um, so I said the model is conductive to the creation of effective e-learning culture and participant of architecture. And I think that's maybe a, a common thread to anything I'm saying today is the participation, the inclusiveness. You know, there, there aren't economic or other barriers to locking people out. The modern open source idioms, collaboration, participation, innovation, and building on the works of, works of others. And that's quite an interesting, quite an interesting um, aspect I find in a software company. Um, the software engineers kind of like to write their own stuff. And it's quite a move for us to, to use other people's software and then actually build on top of it. Uh, the openness to sharing, flexibility, and responsiveness. Flexibility is quite an interesting um, aspect of this space. And, and it, I guess it's more of a mentality. Um, we had a conference recently up in Belfast and a keynote speaker pulled out. And I had to put a put a request out to a number of people around the world looking looking for a replacement. And the guys about fast at the University of Wolf St. Georgetown we were working with, they just couldn't believe the number of responses I got within about a day and a half. And the mentality seems to be that way. It's responsive, it's open, it's kind of a giving mentality. And I find that probably probably the most, the most enabling and most um, encouraging aspect of the things that I come across. Again, I'm talking about collaborative community model. It's proven to work with familiar to students. I think that's a, you know, the, it's, it's a school kind of a paradigm. And um, what we're seeing recently with, you know, social networks and the, the, the way that younger people are adapting to social networks, they like to be included. They like to have their own say. Um, I'm trying to finish this piece. It's just a quote I picked up from a teacher. It was one of the UK sites. Um, you know, I'm not talking about somebody on audition here, just saying, began to realize students needed a lot more than what he was getting on the, the laptops or the PCs as were coming in. He needed a lot of software. And he had a problem setting them home with a letter every couple of weeks, asking them to pay for something new. And then he's saying, as he got further into it, he realized that giving them tools that they could modify or could participate in actually turned the children on an awful lot more. So I, I thought this was quite a, quite a nice quote because, like I said, it's not somebody on a mission. It's just kind of a practical, oh yeah, I need this, I need that, I need something else. Where can I get them? How can I pay them? And I picked up from a, a, a gentleman called Richard Ghosh that I would brought him to Ireland a number of times to speak. He's originally the university, UN University of Mirrors has um, a master's. And he's done significant exhaustive studies of the evolution and contribution of open source in Europe. Um, and like his studies have been strongly challenged by some price vendors in Brussels because he's influencing um, policy in Brussels and Brussels are trying to influence national government. Um, so we're saying that again kind of the lock in um, and especially like if you if you teach geography and you teach arts GIS only then that's what all the graduates do, and that forces companies to employ them to only buy that platform, which is not a cheap platform. Um, the second point, I think, is maybe maybe the same idea. In fact, the third point, the same point as well. Um, and we're, you know, we're thinking ideally the use of open source technologies would encourage students to have a critical viewpoint towards different software. You know, so. If you say Office, Microsoft Office, very good product. Open Office, good product. K Office, very good product. Happy Word, good product. You know, like we do in other aspects of our lives, we don't all drive back forwards. We drive Volkswagens, we drive whatever. And understand the difference between open and proprietary and, you know, you know some benefit in that. And becoming active contributors, at least uh, the, 